Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am going over all the items that we like to keep in our chicken first aid kit. I'm gonna kind of go through from beginning to end each item. And then there are a few items I couldn't find. They're still somewhere in packing boxes. So I linked those for you in the blog post below and all the items I'm about to go over are linked of course as well. I finally made my first t-shirt. So this is available in our shop if you want to grab one for yourself. It comes in a lot of different colors too and it's super soft. So of course I linked that for you too. The items in this video that I'm recommending are just general things to keep in your first aid kit. Some of the more specific ailments and injuries you're gonna want to get specific stuff for, but everything I'm about to talk about should be able to be used for a wide variety of illnesses and ailments with chickens. Okay, let's get started. I am not really sure where to start. Hmm. Let's start right here. So this is NutriDrench, not the easiest to say, but it is kind of a vitamin and electrolyte supplement that you can add to your chicken's water if your chicken is feeling sick. A lot of people swear by this stuff, say that it makes a big difference in just a day or two uh, for their sick chickens. So this is something that we do like to keep on hand and really easy way to just kind of boost a sick chicken or an injured chicken, help them get over the difficult part. Okay, next, um, something everyone probably has in their house already, but just a good pair of scissors. Many of these items are something you probably already have, but I just really recommend keeping a designated set for just chicken first aid because just for sanitary reasons, you don't really want to mix and match with your other household stuff. So a good pair of scissors. I guess we use it mostly for wing clipping when we had a fenced in yard, but yeah, pretty versatile. Hmm, okay, next let's go. You know what? I'm gonna have to go in order here or I'm gonna get totally lost. This is what I would use to clip nails instead. So just kind of a general pet nail clipper. Um, I have another nail clipping option if this doesn't work for you, but a lot of people will use this to clip beaks as well as nails. If you're like us and you get a cross beak chicken or you're just, your chicken isn't pecking or scratching enough, clipping nails, clipping beaks, this kind of thing. It has the guard to help avoid the quick. Okay, you guys have heard me talk about this stuff a million times, save a chick, electrolyte mix. You just add it to their water really helps the chicks get that extra boost they need in the beginning to um, get those electrolytes, get hydrated again after their journey. And you know, any kind of travel is stressful on chicks. So really recommend this stuff, just keeping it on hand. Even after you get your chicks, if you want to just add it, if you have a sick chick or an injured chick, again, this is going to kind of give them an extra leg up. Okay, definitely necessary for injured chickens, just exam gloves to keep things sanitary. Things can get messy if you have an injured chicken or a sick chicken and you just, you're just you going to want some gloves on hand. So we do keep some of these exam gloves at all times, just kind of in various places of our house, but especially we have a set for chickens if we need to be dealing with them. By the way, I should say I'm not a veterinarian, obviously. If you can see a vet with your chicken, that is my first recommendation. Uh, if you're like us, a lot of vets in our area will not even see chickens. So some things we have to take into our own hands. This is just, if your vet can't help you, this is some good stuff to keep on hand. Believe me, just get the gloves now before you actually need them. You don't want to find yourself wishing you had them. Okay, now we have a towel, an old raggedy towel, <laughs> very fancy. You can see this one is dirty because it's old and raggedy. If you need to calm a chicken down or you're examining a chicken or fixing a chicken, you know their wings are the first things to fly, no pun intended. And those things hurt when they hit you in the face. So wrapping a chicken in a nice soft towel is uh, a really good thing to do, it's a good thing to have on hand. So I recommend keeping a towel with your first aid chicken kit. Next, I have some gauze, so kind of another first aid staple. If you have a bleeding chicken, you, uh, you're you gonna want some gauze to be able to pack on there. Obviously a good thing to have on hand for any kind of first aid, uh, but we do, you know, kind of like most of these things, we keep some gauze separately just for the chickens because definitely not something you wanna be kind of mixing and matching. If you're giving gauze to the chickens, you don't really wanna be grabbing the same batch of gauze for if you have a human injury, so. I recommend just keeping it totally separate. All right, next we have some Veteracin. I hope I'm saying that right. Just kind of an all around treatment for chicken wounds. It can be used for pecking injuries, vent prolapse, bumblefoot, other wounds. This is a good go-to 
Uh, a lot of people recommend against using Neosporin on a lot of chicken forums because of the ingredients, uh, especially because you know, we eat kind of the products that comes from the chickens, they're eggs. So you definitely want to be careful about what you give them. Make sure that it is safe for the chickens, but also safe for human consumption on some level too. I'm not saying to eat this stuff by any stretch, but um, for that reason, a lot of people say not to use Neosporin and recommend this instead. So we are kind of passing along that advice. Uh, hopefully it is somewhat useful. Also recommend keeping on hand just some petroleum jelly. Again, just keep separate stuff for your humans and your chickens, but this is good for putting on chickens combs. For example, in the winter for longer comb chickens to help prevent frostbite, you might need it for other things too with chickens, uh, just kind of a skin protectant, but we use it mostly for our roosters uh, to protect their combs from frostbite. Okay, now I have a little tiny syringe. I use this kind of syringe a lot to treat gar or not garlic with garlic water to treat sour crop when we had sour crop chickens with sour crop. So I'm familiar with using this. You can use leftover little ones you have laying around, or if you don't know where they are, uh, I did link some for you too. Just a general pack of them. I don't know that they really recommend reusing these, especially if you have a sick chicken. So if we were using them on a sick chicken, we'd pretty much like to throw them away after we use them. They're pretty cheap, so it's it's not hard to keep a pack on hand or just reuse the ones that haven't been used on a sick chicken yet. Here I have some bandage wrap. I will be honest, I just kind of haven't used this on chickens yet, but do like to keep it on hand because I feel like someday it's going to come in handy. Um, chickens obviously move a lot, and I feel like if I wanted to keep gauze in place or, I don't know, just wrap chickens wings against their body to hold them steady for a little bit longer. This is probably what I would use. It's kind of sticky like this. You just wrap it around. It has stretch to it. So um, it, there's, it's pretty versatile that way. I haven't had to use it yet, but I do keep some with my chicken first aid kit and other first aid kits too. Okay, one of my favorites, I have these little plastic bowls. If you get chicks, there's a really, really good chance you're gonna need to use these for fixing pacey butt. To fix pacey butt, you just soak their little bums in warm water. Trust me, you do not want to use any kind of dishes that you're gonna wanna eat out of again. So these are like perfect chick pasty butt soaking size and they are just the right opening, just the right depth for I think chicks and fixing pasty butt. You, you just wanna get these before you need them because it's kind of yucky to be rummaging through your own dishes and trying to pick a dish that you don't wanna use again because when the poopy falls off, you're just not gonna be wanting to eat out of that dish again, I promise. So these are cheap, they come in a huge stack and I recommend them for fixing chicks with pasty butt. Another nail trimming option, uh, if you have dogs or even cats, you might want this instead. This is the Dremel Nail Grinder slash Trimmer. It is a product designed specifically for trimming pets' nails. Um, I lost the guard that's supposed to go on it, so don't use it like this. But we absolutely love this thing. I mean, trimming our dog's nails used to be kind of a nightmare before this, but they don't mind this nail grinder for trimming their nails. So we did used to use this for our crossbeak chicken too, um, to trim her beak because she couldn't trim it down. For some reason, just clipping it was terrifying to me. So I liked to use this instead. Full disclosure, Dremel did send us this product a long time ago. As you can see, it's very well worn. They sent it to us to try out and we have loved it since, but they, uh, they did send it to us for free, but we've been using it. I don't know. That was probably three or four years ago and we've been using it ever since. Okay. What next? Let's go with the garden and poultry dust. I get a ton of questions on how to fix mites. Um, I actually, we've never had a mite problem in our coop, but this is a highly recommended mite solution. And the good news is that you can use it on a ton of other stuff too, says the package. It's just kind of an all around insect infestation treatment and or prevention method, I guess. Permethrin, permethrin, did I say that right? We haven't had mites. So uh, again, I, I haven't had to use this yet myself, but I, Get so many questions about mites that I figured I would let you guys know about this stuff. On the back, it also talks about using it for all kinds of garden bug infestations, fruit and nut trees, ornamentals, uh, even other pets. So I, probably just a good thing to have on hand. We may try using it this summer because we get more bug problems in our garden than our chicken coop. 
Next, I have a little tiny medicine dropper that I think is useful to have on hand if you need to give your chickens a very small dose of something. Again, I've only really had to use the garlic water, which is a relatively large dosage for sauerkraut, but sometimes chickens just need like one or two drops of something, in which case you're probably gonna want a dropper instead of an actual syringe. Okay, now I have some cornstarch. A lot of chicken keepers will use cornstarch if they clip a nail too short and it starts bleeding or for if you've ever trimmed a bird's feathers too short, they have uh, they can bleed that way too for a long time. So full disclosure, I have not used cornstarch to stop bleeding myself. I prefer to use quick stop powder, which is one of the things that I can't find right now. It's somewhere in a packing box, but some people say they use the cornstarch because it's food grade instead, but I've also heard that it doesn't work as well as the quick stop powder. So I personally recommend the quick stop, but cornstarch is another food grade alternative that I have heard. Um, I linked both for you guys below. Okay, next we have apple cider vinegar. You probably already have this one at home, um, but it is a good worm preventer, I believe. So I've mentioned in my other videos, we stopped giving it to our chickens when we had a few cases of sour crop, which we believe that apple cider vinegar might have been contributing to um, because it is a fermented food. Sour crop is essentially fermentation in the crop. If you use it, you do wanna get the one including the mother. For the first time in like five years, we did have a few chickens with worms. So we may start introducing it back into their water as a preventative. But this is kind of the, the mother. <laughs> That's what you wanna make sure that you get. That's the good stuff. So I've been told. And finally, I have a great big bag of diatomaceous earth. Look, be careful when you use this stuff. <laughs> Look up what it is. Uh, basically, it's kind of a, another all around insect fixer, insect repellent, and it's kind of a food grade alternative to the garden and poultry dust I showed you earlier. A lot of people just throw this stuff around and there are warnings on the bag because it's not uh, totally harmless. It's, you gotta be careful. So look into it before you just start throwing it around, um, kind of like I did when I first started keeping chickens. And I, I later learned that you gotta be careful with this stuff, both for you and your chickens, but um, again, a food grade alternative to the garden and poultry dust that I showed you earlier. Like I mentioned before, there are a few items on the blog post that I can't find for this video. The most important one being the quick stop powder. Really recommend keeping that on hand. Another thing, few things I talked about were just food storage jars. Epsom salt is another really good one to keep on hand, just a separate one for your chickens. A work light you wanna have for if and when you're working on chickens in the dark, which is more often than not. And um, disposable puppy pads. Just There's a few more on there, but various things that you may or may not have laying around your house that are probably a good idea to just collect and put in a big uh, chicken first aid kit container because you know keeping chickens is not like keeping dogs and cats in the sense that a lot of vets won't really bother seeing them and a lot of things really you're kind of just going to have to treat on your own so i linked everything for you below but again that blog post has a few more items and of course if you want to grab one of these t-shirts that is linked for you as well if you want to let other people know what you like to keep in your chicken first aid kit and or what you wish you've had please leave a comment so that we can all learn from each other but otherwise i hope this was a little bit helpful Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.